is the holiday rush making you manic and are porch pirates taking everything you ordered online as soon as it arrives and does the hecticness of the holidays make you want to end it all forever wait a minute wait a minute don't do anything rash yet essay here and when I'm not on the computer sounding like a complete doofus I'm also a published author and I got a deal for you. Sit down and relax with Glitch, a precarious duo, and its sequel, Glitch, The Future is Unwritten. This American book series combines literary fiction and crime thriller to keep you on entertained for hours. And it's on sale now, not 10, not 20, but 50% off. It's available on Kindle and paperback. The links are below in description. And unlike other Christmas gifts, you don't have to worry about porch pilots stealing it off your device. And you can order it as soon as you put your Christmas cookies in the oven. But don't take too long because the sale is only good for the end of the year. And I'm not some one hit wonder. I have other books coming down the pike, so if nothing unexpected happens to me... I demand that you shoot me now! You'll see those other books soon enough. Now let's get back to the video. Hello again. Essay here. There's a old phrase, biblical, from Revelations. And uh, colloquially it goes like this. And the sea shall give up the dead in it. And all were judged by what they have done. Now, most people just quote the first part. But they never quote the second part. Why? Don't rightly know. But the phrase is quite self-explanatory. It basically means that in the end all secrets would be revealed. Nothing stays hidden forever. And of course, right now, some of you are probably uh, typing out, what about the Kennedy assassination? Yeah, well, we haven't reached doomsday yet, so just hang on to your hats. But this is not about JFK and his premature death. No, this is about Jeffrey Epstein and his premature death. Now, of course, a lot of you are probably typing right now, the Epstein didn't kill himself. Hey, everyone knows about that. I mean, it's a bloody uh, internet meme, for Pete's sakes. However, whoever had a hand in Mr. Epstein's premature burial, they may not be sleeping soundly for much longer. Why? Well, uh, according to Tim Poole, yeah, I know, I like the guy, but whatever. Uh, a recent court judgment came down. And you say, so what? Well, do you remember uh, the, the Prince of uh, York? Yeah, Prince Andrew? Yeah, that sleazy guy. Well, apparently, um, he was sued by uh, Virginia Roberts. You say, who the hell is that? Well, if you were paying attention to all the Epstein mess, it, you probably halfway know who Miss uh, Roberts is. She was the one you saw in all those pictures with Prince Andrew, with her underage self about to be, uh, ahem, uh, you uh, use like a condom by uh, the prince. Well, anyhow, uh, 
her lawsuit uh, finally went through the court system and uh, there was a settlement what kind of settlement well so far it's undisclosed however the judge who was involved in the case um, yeah, what's the judge's name uh, Pasca I think her name is Lorraine Pasca well, apparently she felt that uh, simply uh, settling uh, the lawsuit uh, between Miss Roberts and the Prince wasn't good enough. That uh, Ghislaine Maxwell, yeah, you remember her, you know, uh, uh, her tonto to uh, Epstein's uh, Kimosabi. Well, apparently the judge decided that she shouldn't be the only one sitting in a uh, stir by herself. That uh, other people who uh, liked the prince were enjoying themselves a little too much with the underage... Uh, <laughs> apparently uh, their names are going to be revealed. How many? Well, according to the judge, 177 of them. Oh. Well, this is going to be interesting. And then you say, well, too bad for them. Yeah. But except there's one small problem. Jeffrey Epstein wasn't a pedophile. And you say, what? Hear me out. Because if you were paying attention to the whole Epstein mess, you would know that Epstein had a lot of powerful people looking out for him. And not just Hillary Clinton. No, 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 no. There was a lot of powerful people. Very powerful people. People who were not just in the D.C. Beltway either. People who were captains of industry. And people who were likely nobility. And we're not just talking about uh, Prince Andrew either. No, 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 no. And then you say, so what the hell are you talking about? We have witnesses who claim that uh, Jeffrey had a habit of uh, putting his hands on little girls. And, not, and I'm thinking, yeah, that's true. But think about it. After Jeffrey Epstein was arrested for the second time, not the first time. Everyone knows about the first time, but the second time. When he got busted for good. What do you remember happened on Epstein Island? The feds showed up. Was it the FBI? CIA? NSA? We don't know. We just heard that it was the feds. And according to the people who worked on the island, they said that these people went through all the rooms and started taking apart all the surveillance equipment. And you say, what? Yeah. See, only a few people who were really paying attention understand this. Epstein Island was wired for, for uh, stereophonic sound and Technicolor. Yeah. In other words, there's more cameras on Epstein Island than there is in the White House. And yet they can't seem to find out who planted that damn uh, cocaine. Well, I'm not going to get into. And they took all of that camera and surveillance equipment away. And, wait for it, they took away all the hard drives. that had all those pretty pictures on there of all those perverted people uh, getting their jollies off of all those underage girls. And then you say... So, uh, what happened? So, what happened to that material? Very good question. But people, smart people, they believe that uh, those feds that picked up picked up all that equipment and all them surveillance videos and pictures, they were Jeffrey Epstein's bosses. And you say bosses? Yeah. Because think about it, Jeffrey Epstein, uh, his one claim to fame, other than that, 
was that he was a mathematics teacher. Yeah, you can look it up. And you say, so what? A lot of mathematics teachers. So how is it that mathematics teacher, someone who I think was working at some uh, highbrow uh, academy up uh, up in the East Coast of, uh, I think he was, yeah, I think he was working in New York. How does someone like that end up becoming, you know, hobnobbing with all sorts of famous people, whether it be, um, the guy who I think he currently runs the Victoria's Secrets and uh, various other people as well, including Donald Trump, even though Donald Trump said he cut his ties with Epstein way back in the early 2000s. And there's evidence to back that up. So all you all you uh, people with TDS, just don't even go there. OK, just forget about it. And then you say, well, maybe he's just uh, someone who uh, read a Carnegie's book, you know, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And I'm thinking, yeah, well, a lot of people read that book. This book's around for 100 years. And yet Epstein got to know a lot of very, very famous people, a, very, a lot of very, very powerful people, including uh, Bill Clinton. So then you say, well, okay. He hobnobs with a lot of famous people, very powerful people. Doesn't mean that he worked for the security services of the United States or the feds. And I'm thinking, are you sure about that? Because this man, remember, he didn't come from a wealthy family. And yet, he had a private island, he had a private plane, a plane that was given to him by the guy who used to run I think, okay, he still probably runs Victoria's Secrets. You know, the Lolita Express. Yeah, well, when we came to Lolita Express, it was the private jet of the guy who uh, yeah, currently owns uh, Victoria's Secrets. And then you say, well, why would the guy give him that? And, of course, remember his uh, townhouse? You know, Jeffrey's townhouse? The one that no one could seem to find a deed of sale for? The one that had that weird picture of Bill Clinton in the blue dress on the wall. Yeah, that one. Yeah, when you dissect the saga of Jeffrey Epstein, there's so many missing gaps in there. I mean, for example, look at Elon Musk. Elon Musk... He didn't come from a wealthy family, but he had that one smart idea. He knew about, he figured out how to make PayPal. And then when he made enough money, he sold it, and then he started up uh, Tesla. And when he sold enough cars at Tesla, he then started SpaceX. And that's why he's a, <laughs> one of the wealthiest people on Earth. In other words, he worked hard and left the paper trail. Now, when you look at Jeffrey Epstein, he started out as a school teacher. But then, how did he jump from a school teacher to hobnobbing with the people at Victoria's Secrets? And how did he get that townhouse and that plane and that island? There's gaps, missing gaps. And this goes back to all those suits who picked, took apart all that surveillance equipment, all them videos, uh, latent hard drives, and walked out the door with them. Now, people, really smart people, probably know where this uh, is going now. Because none of those videos have ever seen the light of day. None of those pictures have seen the light of day either. Why is that? Well, back during the bad old days of the Soviets, they had a phrase called contramat. And in translating to English, it means compromising material. And you say, okay, so? Well, back during the bad old days of the Soviets, these uh, commissars and party officials would have a habit of blackmailing each other. 
they would get one of their political rivals into a compromising situation with, you know, like uh, Epstein. And then they would make sure that they would have pictures and video of the whole thing. And then uh, said person who has the compromised material will go to the person who they intend to uh, <clears throat> use it on and tell them to hit the road, Jack. And usually that's what happened. And therefore a lot of uh, uh, commissars usually end up losing their jobs and sometimes lose their lives. <laughs> I mean, you think uh, uh, purges only happened during Stalin? Yeah, it happened during Khrushchev and Brezhnev too. And indeed, wait for it, you ready? When Yeltsin was there, uh, the guy who used to be in charge of the FSB, someone got compromat on him and forced him to step down and know who his replacement was. You ready? You ready? Oh, Vlad Putin. Yeah. Makes you wonder who set up those cameras to catch his former uh, uh, official uh, in that compromising position. Hmm? But anyway, back to Epstein. Therefore, when you think about Epstein's activities, you can only assume that he was a front man. He was basically the go-between. He was the flim-flam man, the con man, the confidence man. Uh, the grifter. He was the guy who lured the targeted <clears throat> um, victims down the Pimrose path and to get them into a compromising position. And then Epstein's bosses, who remain in the shadows, they would then use the contramat against these targeted people. And then you say what, what they use it for? The only thing you can assume is that just like the Soviets, they want to have that compromise on people's heads. That way, uh, when time comes, they can either ask for a favor or more than one favor. And if the people refuse, that contramat ends up over the 6 o'clock news. You dig? You get it? All right. Now... About this judge, uh, Preska, and the 177 names she wants to reveal, there's a very good chance that those names will likely will not be revealed. Especially if it involves, you no know, VIPs, very important people, you know, politicians, captains industry, judges perhaps. Yeah. And indeed, according to Tim, there's a big hint that uh, most of the names that, she, that this judge is going to reveal are actually just flunkies who, you know, worked for Epstein. You know, you know sweeping, the, sweeping the floors of the used condoms after these contramat sessions were recorded. And who wants, and who cares about them? We want to know about the big names. We want to know who was in the damn... Uh, in the room with Bill Clinton when Bill Clinton was on Lolita Island. Hmm? Yeah, that's what we want to know. And therefore, we have to ask question. Will those names be ever revealed? Very important people? People who no one suspected of being on Epstein Island? People who probably are right now as we speak being uh, blackmailed? by Epstein's bosses who are still hidden and still have that contramat on them? I'm going to take a wager, probably not. Why? Because apparently uh, Epstein had been doing this for a very long time. And from the few people who worked on Epstein Island, who was willing to talk, they said that Epstein Island had a lot of visitors. 
lots of visitors. They wouldn't say who the visitors were, but they would basically extrapolate saying, yeah, uh, Epstein Island was almost as busy as Penn Station during rush hour. Makes you wonder who all those people were visiting Epstein Island, huh? Yep. Certainly makes you wonder. But who knows? Maybe this judge will surprise us and actually reveal names of very important people. Though I'm not holding my breath. Why? Well, because long ago, back during the Roman era, there was a writer, the <laughs> Juvenalius, but nowadays he's simply known as Juvenile. And before you even start laughing out loud, please don't. Even though it's pronounced Juvenile, it's spelled slightly different. But anyway, the guy was a satirist. And in one of his satires, uh, he wrote a very telling line. <laughs> it says, I, all, I hear always the astonishment of my friends. Bolt her in, constrain her. But who will guard the guardians? The wife planned ahead and to begin with them. And you say, huh? Well, colloquially speaking, that phrase had been distilled down over the last 20 centuries to who will watch the watchman. And this guy, Juvenilius, when he wrote that, he was basically uh, criticizing uh, the wide-reaching application and concepts of tyrannical governments uncontrolled oppressive dictatorships and police and uh, and judicial corruption and of course anyone who's been, who's been paying attention to what's been going on in the dc beltway since joe biden is there knows that there's a lot of corruption in the dc beltway a whole lot more than you can shake a stick at therefore being aware of that level of corruption and being aware that Epstein likely worked for those people in the D.C. Beltway, these corrupt feds, nameless, faceless feds, you have to ask, your que ask the question out loud. This judge, she wants to reveal names, faces, perhaps even addresses to Epstein's uh, clients. However, as a juvenile wrote all those centuries ago, can we trust a judge to stick to a word? Or will these shadowy figures that used to be Epstein's bosses might reach out to her? Yeah, that's right. Who indeed will guard the guardians or who will watch the watchman especially if those institutions are completely corrupt and completely corrupted yep that's right so anyone who's salivating right now at the idea of seeing that list of uh, Epstein's uh, clients, uh, you better stick your tongue back in your mouth because in all likelihood, these shadowy figures, they'll probably have a little conversation with that judge. And then you'll probably, and then you'll probably uh, see the the corruption uh, how far it goes throughout the entire uh, infrastructure of our governmental systems yep who will watch the watchmen indeed that's all I have to say about old Jeffrey 
and his magical mystery client list. And that's my opinion.